You know, God's first warning about how serious sin is is when he flooded the earth. His immense wrath against sin caused him to destroy all but eight humans in a flood of water. Now, I don't know that because there's remnants of the flood on every mountaintop around the world. I don't know that because I've been to the Answers in Genesis Creation Museum. I know that because God said he did it. You understand that? God says he killed every single human being on the earth except for Noah, his wife, his three sons, and each of their wives. Eight people. God said it. And he killed every breathing, air-breathing creature, and he flooded every square inch of this planet. That's why when I pull a commentary off of my shelf and this well-meaning Christian says, it was at the Black Sea. That's where the flood was. It's on the Anatolian plain. It was just in Mesopotamia. I thought, who are you to disagree with God? Just because science doesn't like you? Science does verify the flood. It's just you, don't want, you just don't want to believe them. There are remnants on, on the top of every mountain, from Mount Everest to the Andes Mountains, all the way to the Rockies. There's, there's, water was on those mountains. God says, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I, I hate sin so much I killed everyone except for a new beginning. So the greatest time God showed his wrath against sin was the flood, but then his second was even a greater warning. He said, sin is so bad I have to kill my own son. Remember, you either die with your sins or my son takes them. He said, that's how much I hate sin. Well, real quickly, let me show you in chapter 6, and we're going to close. Let me show you the staggering numbers of how much God hates sin. And uh, I'll do this in nine minutes. This is your nine-minute overview of the tribulation, the staggering numbers of the great tribulation. Basically, if the tribulation happens in the next few years, if it kicks off in the next few years, according to the world population clock, there are 7,034,897,482 people that were alive yesterday, according to them. If the tribulation starts in the next decade, the Bible says half of those seven billion will die. You say, did you get that from Tim left behind LaHaye? No, I got it from God Almighty, who's already told us what's going to happen. It's like the flood. You just, if you believe what he said. So what does God say? Well, he says in the great tribulation, if it happens in this decade, two and a half million people will die every day. Every day. That's a lot of people. How do they even bury them? It, let's put it in perspective. In the German death camp called Auschwitz, they used all German engineering skills possible. They could only kill a thousand people a day. It was just, I mean, with every bit of German ingenuity at work, they could only herd, capture, gas, and burn a thousand a day. And they did it nonstop. And that was the worst of the death camps. Well, that means during the tribulation, 2,500 times as many people will die every day. I mean, think of having 2,500 Auschwitzes operating at that speed around the world. To put it in Auschwitz terms, the number of people that died every 24 hours at that death camp will die every 15 seconds. That means you'll have a holocaust every 15 seconds. According to God, it's not very exciting. It's horrible to think about. I mean, these are people. And if it's in the next few years, it's people that you know. In terms of living on earth, it'll be like being in Auschwitz death camp, and every day the toll will be equivalent to the entire World War II Holocaust. Every other day, three million will die. Every day, three million. Every other day, six million. That's how many of the total Holocaust killed. It's like having a Holocaust every other day. What is it? Well, look at chapter 6, verse 8. One out of every two people will die. If you look at that, it says that, that starts there, it says a fourth will die. But if you read all the way through chapter 16, you see the other fourth get killed. And basically, that amounts to 11 times the current population of the United States will die during the tribulation. So think of the United States and multiply it out 11 times, and that's how many human beings are going to die in that short period of time of the tribulation. Number two, look at chapter 8, verse 7. Not only will one out of every two die, but number two, one-third of all living 
vegetation, grass, trees, everything green is destroyed. A third of it. Now, I used to live in Oklahoma, and there used to be these funny signs. I remember when Bonnie and I first drove from Rhode Island to Oklahoma, I said, hey, take a picture of that sign, honey. It's so cute. And it says, do not drive into the smoke. And I looked out, and it was perfectly blue skies. I said, isn't that a strange sign? So I got to, to the church, and I said, what are all those funny signs that say don't drive in the smoke? They said, you'll find out. About August, you'll find out. About August, the prairie fire started. When those things are going, you don't drive in the smoke. You pull over. You can't even see the, your hood, the hood ornament if you had one. You know, you can't see. It's just dense smoke. And it's just little tiny grass fires. This, look what it says in verse 7. The first sound, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up, and the green grass was burned up. That's amazing. Number three, look at verse 12, same chapter, Revelation 8, verse 12. The sun and moon will be darkened. Nature goes in revolt. You can't count. You know, the solar lunar tab tables for fishing and hunting, forget it. Everything goes crazy. Sun and moon are darkened. Uh, look at chapter 9. Keep, keep turning the page to chapter 9, verse 3. The gates of the pit. I call it hell, but it's not really the lake of fire. It's this holding place for these demonic creatures opens up and herds of locusts the size of horses. Have you ever seen a close-up of a locust? Those things are menacing. You, know, you get a National Geographic and look at a blow-up of what those things look like and imagine them the size of a horse and then imagine them being a demonic creature that come flying out of this pit and it says that they have a sting like a scorpion and the pain sears for five months and the Bible says that people will beg God to let them die because the pain is so searing from these things. Number five, there'll be a worldwide famine. Uh, it, it's mentioned in, in Revelation 18, 8, it says uh, death and mourning and famine. Jesus says in Matthew 24, there'll be famines and earthquakes. And Revelation 6 says the food will get so expensive people can't even buy it. You know our little drought we had? You know, it wasn't little, but it, the biggest one since 1956. So it's the biggest one since I've been alive. That's going to be global. You know what's neat is we get a little touch of what it's going to be like in the news. But there's going to be a worldwide famine unlike anything the world has ever seen. Number six, there'll be a, a war so bloody, the blood of those killed in battle flows for 200 miles. Now, you know, you go to an accident scene or, you know, to an emergency room and it just seems like blood just goes. But, you know, blood that splashes, the Bible says, to the height of a horse's bridle. I remember when I used to wear my big yellow rubber boots. And my mom would say, stay out of the mud puddles. And when she wasn't looking, I'd go, poof, like that. I could only get the water to this high. How much do you have to have to have blood splashing this high to the height of a horse's bridle, 200 miles long? All told, number seven, during the Great Tribulation, as many as half the people on earth will be killed. Now do you see why the person that knew all about this, the apostle, Paul said that the church is looking for the glorious appearing and the blessed hope. It's not a blessing or a hope to live with those locust horse demons. It's not a blessing or a hope to see two and a half million people dying and trying to find a place to bury them and walk over them every day. It's not a blessed hope. You see, the church, us, you and I today, are part of God's plan because he set aside Israel temporarily because they rejected their calling and mission. And so the Lord says, I'm going to call out for myself a people that will be my kingdom of priests and a holy nation, and I'm going to have them be in the world to be my witnesses. And that's what we're supposed to be, by the way. That's the only reason we're here. But there's a day coming when he says, that's enough. I'm going to return and restore the house, the tabernacles of David. James 15. James in Acts 15 says that. And the apostles understood that the church was temporary and God's going to return and work with Israel. And when that happens, we're going to be around the throne with our bowls of prayer and watch the Lord unleash this judgment. So, to be participating. Now, do you see why the Lord says we're supposed to pray every day and say, Our Father who art in heaven, I want my life to hallow your name. And I'm asking for your kingdom to come right now, right here. I want you to rule my life. 
But more than that, I want you to bring justice, vengeance. I want you to end the sin of this world.